So, uh, so it's 1965, and Elvis has not really done any, um, what they would call secular recordings for m most of a year. Um, outside of his movies, he hadn't really done any, uh, studio recordings. Um, and so, uh, with the contracts that... Uh, the Colonel had him lined up with with RCA. They needed to come up with an album to release, and so they went digging into the archives and uh, managed to come up with Elvis for Everyone, um, which is a concept album. I love the uh, the artwork; is actually pretty good. Um, the The gimmick is that Elvis is selling uh, previously unreleased or or rarely heard songs from. Uh, from the archives that had not been released at that time. And some of them had obviously been um, heard in movies um, in my way, had been in Wild in the Country, um, Santa Lucia had been in uh, Viva Las Vegas. Um, but for the most part, the rest of these um, had actually not really been released. Um, there's, uh, but the, the thing about this album is that this is a hodgepodge. Um, it jumps around audibly. Um, the first track is Your Cheating Heart, which Elvis recorded in, in the 50s, and they put it away for um, the reason that, that they weren't really satisfied with it at the time. Um, Elvis, I think, thought that he could do better on uh, on that Hank Williams song, um, and he really didn't um, ever go back to that. Um, so they, they ended up utilizing it to flesh out their um, their, uh, or to fulfill their contract. So what ends up happening is that, uh, a lot of good songs, um, get, it's just, it's kind of a mixed bag. Um, Memphis, Tennessee, the, the Chuck Berry song is on here. Um, Elvis's version of that is really, um, really phenomenal. Um, Tomorrow Night from the Sun Sessions actually makes an appearance here. And uh, in a complete reversal from what they did on Girl Happy with the title song, they actually um, slowed down and pitched down Tomorrow Night so that uh, it would supposedly sound more contemporary. It would sound like Elvis in 1965 as opposed to Elvis in uh, 1954. Um, and then they added a bunch of overdubs. There's like background singers and uh, drums and things like that that weren't on there originally. Um, historically, it's it's fun to listen to this album um, because it is a hodgepodge and it's fascinating to imagine what an Elvis fan might have thought picking this up in a record store in the 60s. Um, but it's it's very much uh, one of Colonel Parker's marketing ploys. It's, uh, I mean, the entire backside, if you look, it's all one big advertisement for Elvis's albums, uh, Elvis's other albums. Um, so that's kind of disappointing, um, that there's really not any story here as to why these songs are significant, whether they're new, whether they're old, um, didn't really come out until after the fact. Um, but as far as the, the individual songs themselves, there are a few uh, of the ones on here that are, are my personal favorites. In My Way is one of my personal favorites. Um, the other one that uh, I particularly like is um, When It Rains It Really Pours. This is uh, the studio version from the 50s. Elvis uh, attempted a version of, of When It Rains It Really Pours at uh, Sun Records just before he left and signed with RCA and he wasn't satisfied with it so he went back and redid it in the 50s and then it finally finally got released on Elvis for everyone. But uh, this, is, uh, this is where we start getting some marketing uh, or, or some confusion in the marketplace where uh, like with something for, every, uh, for everybody, Elvis for everyone, um, Potluck, you could have any, any songs on that. It wouldn't make a difference. Um, and it, it doesn't really work as a cohesive whole. Um, but taken track by track, each of these tracks is really strong. They just don't work as a as a whole. So it's not really a good album, but it's a good 
album of songs, um, which is which is just kind of sad because there's some good stuff on here. Um, like I said, "In My Way" is one of my one of my all time favorite Elvis songs. Um, just him and a guitar, um, and I really like what they did with uh, with "In My Way" in um, Viva Elvis when they added it to the to the tail end of of Love Me Tender, and I wish we could get with the uh, with the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra, um, like they did with If I Can Dream, if we could get a fully orchestrated version of In My Way, oh, that would be amazing. But, otherwise, uh, Elvis for Everyone, it, track by track it's okay, as a cohesive whole, it doesn't work. Um, uh, but it's interesting historically.